Next up, taking a peek at the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen inside of the Ford Maverick. Now this one is the Lariat Tremor package, but I'm going to walk you through everything that you need to know about it because it's going to be relatively the same across the board. So first thing, the steering wheel inside of this thing is going to be manual telescoping. So just by my left knee there, so you've got to release in order to go in, out, up and down to find that perfect position. Once you do, click it, lock it back into place. You're going to find the option for a heated steering wheel. So along the bottom right side, you've got a button down the center stack in order to be able to turn it on or off. Like this, so nice and simple. Now, this one doesn't have the adaptive cruise control system. So it's got just regular cruise. So you can toggle the cruise control on. And then actually, hold on, let's get rid of that message. Anytime you get a message on the screen, you can just push the OK button to get rid of it. But regular cruise, you can see it's turning on or off there. And then once you get to speed, you're going to set and then you can either increase or decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. Slightly different layout when you get the adaptive cruise control system because there's also a distance indicator. So how close or far do you want to be away from the vehicle that's in front of you? But if you want to walk through on the adaptive cruise system, you'll find it down in the description of this video. A few things along the side there so you can increase or decrease your volume. You can also mute out along the steering wheel. Along the bottom right side, you can either answer or hang up on a phone call, or you can change between songs or stations, presets, etc. So if you look along the side there, as so you can see, jumping between AM, FM, etc. there. So let's go through, and then one cool thing is that you can also then just press and hold in order to be able to seek out. So it's kind of nice, hold on, you may not be able to see, oh there you go, yeah, you can see if I move you just a little bit. So you can see I can seek out by pushing this instead. So you do just like a basic push in order to move between your different presets there. So AM, FM, Sirius XM or whatever presets are available. And then you just do a push and hold instead if you wanted to be able to seek out stations. So you can seek left versus seek right. Relatively straightforward there. And then there's also a voice command prompt. So this is going to let you do things like change songs, radio stations. If you had factory navigation, you'd also be able to navigate using your voice instead. Now, if you were hooked up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you could do a longer press and hold in order to activate either your Google or your Siri Assistant. If you were hooked up through iPhones, press and hold would, even over Bluetooth, would let you just activate your Siri Assistant. But if you were hooked up over Android devices, just over Bluetooth, that would launch Bixby instead. So you do actually have to be connected to Android Auto in order to launch your Google Assistant. You've got a series of other buttons there to go through the cluster screen, which I'll explain in just a second. There's a button on the tip of the left stick. Can you see there? Oh yeah, there we go. All right, it's so a button on the tip of the left stick there, and that's going to be to turn your lane keeping system on or off. So that works three different ways. So as long as the vehicle recognizes lane markings, it's e and if you start to veer over into a lane without signaling, it's either gonna give you a steering wheel shake, it's gonna nudge you back into your lane, or it's gonna do a mixture of both. So you've got three different options there. Straightforward. You can also use your blinkers, flash out your beams and things like that. Now, one thing you might notice is that the high beams aren't permanently locking out. And that's because by your left knee there, you've also got a selector switch to go between different modes. So if you're in the auto mode, that means that the vehicle is going to be an auto high beam. So if it recognizes the beams need to turn on, it's automatically gonna turn them on. If there's a car oncoming, it'll dim them and then bring them right back up again. But if you want your high beams permanently going, you just go in, to one of the other modes, like that low mode there instead, in order to push away to permanently lock your high beams out instead. Stick along the right hand side is going to be for your front windshield wipers. Adjust out the speed and then you can pull in towards you in order to get that front windshield wiper fluid going. The cluster screen itself is simple. There's honestly not a ton of stuff to it, but you've got your tachometer off to the left, speedometer off to the right, your current engine temperature, the gear that you're currently in, so park reverse neutral drive into a dedicated low gear instead. You've got your current fuel gauge, so how much fuel do you have left. Inside of the cluster, it's your current, so you can see your current kilometers there, however many K are on your vehicle or mileage on the vehicle. Whether or not the auto start stop system is turned on, so you can turn that one off just underneath the screen. Straightforward. I honestly, I usually recommend turning that one off. That's just a matter of preference. I don't like the engine dying when I come to a complete, or turning off, I should say, when it comes to a complete stop. And then you've got current kilometers to empty. So these two work hand in hand together. You've got whether or not that lane keeping system is turned on, yes or no. It's kind of neat though, because when it's turned off, you've got that full digital speedometer versus a slightly different look when you get into that system turned on. 
You've got trip counter or whatever screen you're on, direction you're facing, and then the current outside temperature. Then all I'm going to do is use the buttons along the right hand side there. So you can go back, up or down, or there's a basic menu button there instead. So you can see along the outside right there, there's a series of different lines and those are your individual pages. So you've got a few options there. So it's your average fuel economy, trip counter, tire pressure, etc. And then also your whatever media you're currently listening to. If you were on things like fuel economy, trip counters, etc., you could push and hold the OK button in order for it to be able to reset. So it takes a few seconds there and it's fully reset it for us. It's going to start off at like horrible fuel economy just because I'm parked, but if you were driving, it's going to update it on the fly for you. Going down, you've got tire pressure. So these wheels are off, or tires I should say are off just a teeny little bit. And then you've got current media. If you were to push the menu button, that gives you the option to select other screens. So you can do a calming screen instead, add in a trip to counter, intelligent all wheel drive, off-road status, and then you can see it's now grayed out because you've got a max number of screens that you can use. But once you've checked off whatever screens you'd like to, if you push back and go back home, all of a sudden, look at this. So many other options. So you've got a basic calming screen instead where it's just nice and simple. I mean, look at that. That was really nice. And then you can go down between fuel economy, trip counters, intelligent all-wheel drive, so you can see which wheel is getting which amount of power. And then down to your off-road status, so your pitch and roll. So you can see your vehicle turning angle there, which is useful. And then pitch and roll, so you're looking at whether or not, so this side is going to be whether or not your vehicle's tilted to the left or right, versus this one if you're tilted up versus down. So very, very useful screen if you're going off-road. Nice and simple. Pushing the menu button gets you back to the screen. So again, same idea, you can select whatever screens you'd like. Audio gives you the option for whatever audio sources are currently available. But let's just go, let's just say that you wanted to go Sirius XM, jump through. You can jump through that way instead if you want to. You've got phone settings that are available. So phone, no phone connected, but if it was, you'd be able to see what's going on with your current calls. If you wanted to make a phone call, things like that versus settings. Trailer sway control, if the vehicle recognizes trailer sways happening, it's going to automatically apply braking in order to get that sway under control. And then there are a series of different driver assistant settings. So you've got a blind spot monitoring system. So if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, that's going to highlight in order to let you know that somebody's in that blind spot. And then if it's turned off, you can see there, there's also a little warning message. So more or less just like a basic safety message to say, hey, this system is not currently enabled. Cross traffic alert, if somebody's coming perpendicular from you as you go to back up, it's going to tell you of a potential collision. Driver alert, if you've got that lane keeping system turned on and you start to veer over too many times without signaling, eventually it's going to tell you you should probably take a break. That lane keeping system, so I mentioned, works three different ways. So there's the alert, so the steering wheel shake like you're running over rumble pavement, the aid which nudges you back into your lane, or the alert and the aid which do both. And then it's the intensity of the steering wheel shake. Honestly, it's, it does get pretty crazy when you get into the high. It's honestly, it feels like there's something going on with the vehicle itself. But if you ever get that rumble, it's because this system is turned on. So like I said, you can turn it off just using the button on the tip of the left stick. Pre-collision assist system with active braking. So if the vehicle recognizes a potential collision, it can give you an alert and it can also actively brake for you if it senses a potential collision is going to happen. Some basic vehicle settings, so 30 minute max idle. Obviously, if you're going through a drive-in, you can toggle that off so the vehicle just keeps on running. You've got lighting, auto high beam. So that's the one where I mentioned, if your high beams are not permanently locking out, it's because you're not in the, or it's because you're in the auto mode there along the bottom left. So you could toggle that auto high beam setting off if you want to, but you're still in the auto mode. So that just means that the high beams won't come on at all. From there, you've also got the auto lamp delay. So when you go to lock the vehicle, do the headlamps just turn off or do they stay on for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 120 seconds? Locks, nothing crazy here. So I guess the auto unlock, somebody mentioned an interesting one here. So just general safety to turn this thing off. Big benefit there is that if you come to a complete stop, you turn the vehicle off, the doors won't auto unlock. So just a nice safety feature feedback chirps, etc. So if you go to shut a door and it's not fully shut and you go to lock, it's going to chirp at you to let you know. But remote unlock, when you go to unlock the doors, is it all doors that become unlocked or just the driver's door? And then switch inhibitor, eh, intelligent access on the door itself. So rather than having to unlock the car using the fob, you'd be able to press on the door handle in order to be able to get inside the vehicle instead. 
oil life at 100%, but you could reset there if you're changing oil yourself. And I think that's just about it. Well, remote start. So you could toggle the remote start system off completely if you want to, but if you remote start, what happens? Does the vehicle determine what the climate temp what the climate is, or is it based off of your last setting? Heated seats, heated steering wheel, do they come on automatically, yay or nay? And then the duration of the remote start, so 5, 10, or 15 minutes. And then you've also got wipers, courtesy wipes. So if you've got your windshield wipers going, so you've got a fluid cycle going, it's going to wait until the end of the cycle, go one more time to get rid of any excess liquid that might be on the windshield. So that's the basics there outside of my key. So my key gives you the flexibility of setting up limitations for a key fob. So max speed, max volume, whatever the case may be. It's pretty straightforward to set up. I'm not a big fan of it, but if you've got kids you're lending the or you're lending the vehicle out, you could set up a unique fob to do something to do basic things instead. I think display setup is the last one. So you've got your digital speed in kilometers. So you can go kilometers, miles per hour instead. Do you want to be in miles per gallon, liters per hundred, etc.? Do you want to be in Celsius Fahrenheit, PSI versus KPA versus bar, and then language? So English, Spanish, or French. A few different options there. Now, on top of that, there are a few buttons down the center stack. So you can push there in order to go between different modes. So you've got tow haul mode, normal mode, slippery mode, mud ruts, and then sand mode, because this is the tremor. There's also traction control that you can toggle off. There's a four wheel drive lock. So again, beneficial if you're going off road, you can lock out. But the other one is the rear differential lock. So a big benefit of that rear diff lock, again, for off roading. So if you wanted to lock up that rear differential, you could. And then there's the auto hold setting, which you can't see anything through the screen with that button. So I know that's quite a little bit of information, but that's everything that you need to know about the steering wheel and the cluster screen inside of the Ford Maverick.